herds up here. So I'm gonna try an image tonight. It's clear right now, but who knows what's gonna happen. The weather here, it's, it's been kind of iffy. And for anybody that knows about the Northeast uh, United States, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, you can have three different weather reports. I'm actually gonna do a quick tutorial on using the, the dwarf that's on loan to me from Dwarf Laboratories. And boy, is this, I, all I had to do is just bring it out and plop it and I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna wait till it gets dark and I'll go through the routine. Hi everybody, it's a couple days later as you can tell. I'm in a different shirt. I already collected the data that I wanted and I, ha I couldn't do it that night because I had some problems of weather and stuff like that. But anyways, to do your normal calibration, all you do is just plop your telescope out like this. This is called your home position. Keep it that way and then you just want to move your camera lenses out to some open part of the sky and then just press calibrate and what will happen is it'll move 20 degrees or something like that in one direction go back to home take another picture and go 20 degrees in the other direction take a picture and then it's all calibrated so when it is all calibrated you'll you'll be able to get like I'd say about 10, 15 minutes worth of data. Then you will have this, what's known as field rotation. I went in this on a previous video and Queen the Lazy Geek also did a big video on this. So I'm not gonna go through everything he went through. I'm just gonna set it up uh, so it can take care of the field rotation. Now 10 or 15 minutes is good enough to get a pretty good image, especially with this dwarf. It, it actually get, collects a, a lot of data and if you process it right you can get a really good image and that's for a lot of people that's all they really want or need or if you're doing some type of outreach that's that's plenty but you sometimes you you're, after you've been doing it for a while you may want to get deeper and collect data for like an hour or more well then you're going to have to take care of that field rotation okay so how do you uh, polar align well you want to first off Make sure your telescope's in your home position here. You're going to basically point the whole dwarf towards the North Star, which is Polaris. So first off, in order to do that, now I've got it already oriented towards the North roughly. I know, happen to know that Polaris is gonna be somewhere facing that way. So that's the first thing you wanna do. And then what you wanna do is make sure your camera lenses are pointing directly down the axis of the dwarf. So in this case, they're straight up. And you can use the little creases right here on your dwarf to just make sure they're aligned. And then what you wanna do is uh, not move the dwarf on, on its home position and don't touch the lens anymore. What you wanna do is you wanna reorient the your mount. So you can't do this with the tripod that they give you because it's just not strong enough. You need a bigger tripod because you're going to Turn this until I uh, turn your tripod with the whole dwarf towards Polaris. Now, and turn the camera on, you'll be able to see Polaris with the cameras. And Polaris is really pretty easy to spot because it's a really bright star. There's nothing else around it. So once you get it in that uh, orientation, you're good to go. You just have to get it really as best as you can. You don't have to kill yourself trying to get it aligned with Polaris. Okay, now once you have it towards Polaris, voila, you're polar aligned. Once you got it polar aligned, you don't want to move your azimuth or your altitude uh, controllers anymore. You're done. And now what you want to do is just move your camera lens to where, you, where there's an open part of the sky. Then you can do your normal calibration like you would normally do. Only now it's calibrated and it's polar aligned which means you will take care of that field rotation. Okay, just a quick tutorial on field rotation. What is it? In case you don't know, basically, let's say my hand is an object. Well, it's gonna rise in the east. It's gonna keep rising throughout the night. And then at midnight, it's gonna look like this orientation. It's gonna go up and down. And then as it sets uh, towards the west, the whole orientation is gonna be rotated. So it went from here to that, that's your field rotation. If you, you, the observer, were actually looking at it throughout the night, that's exactly what you'd see. You'd see it rotate throughout the night. If you're imaging, your camera's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna record that. 
Now, if you're just doing a 10 minute shot, it's, it would only go from like here to here and the field rotation really wouldn't be a problem at all. You'd hardly notice it. But if you're gonna shoot for like an hour or more, it would go from here to here and then it would be a problem. So by polar aligning, what you're doing is you're aligning your tracking mount to the rotation axis of Earth. By doing that, you will keep the same orientation throughout the night. So it would it would do have this type of movement. So it would keep that same framing. Okay, folks. Well, it's at nighttime and it's clear right now. So I'm gonna show you how I can set up and collect images of the North American Nebula. I've already got some data on it. Now let's see if I can get some more. And my scope is, well, it's going to be polar line in a few minutes. It's close to it right now, but I'm gonna do it with the uh, camera on momentarily. And I'll, I'll share my uh, iPad screen so you can actually see. You can't see anything right now anyways, it's nighttime, so stay tuned. Okay, got my dwarf on, and I am going to see if I can get Polaris. Okay, that bright star inside the center of the telephoto lens is Polaris. You can see how pretty pretty bright that uh, Polaris is. All right, now I know my mount is polar aligned. So now what I'm going to do is do the calibration. And I'm going to turn almost straight up. And it looks like I'm already pretty well focused from last night, as a matter of fact, or the other night that I was out here doing it. All right, now I'm going to come over to where it says Astro, well, not Astro, I, just, I guess I leave it on to Photo and just go to Feature. Nope, excuse me, I do go to Astro. Feature, Calibration, and it's gonna do its thing. This calibration is amazing how fast it is. I almost cannot believe it. So anyways, very good. Now I'm just going to go to, well, first I'm gonna do a test just to make sure I really am calibrated. I'm gonna to try to go to Vega, which is directly above me. So I'll press confirm. Looks like it's heading in the right direction anyways. And there it is, beautiful. And now, man, that looks pretty good. Uh, the focus looks really good on this thing. I don't think I really want to mess with it. Now, let me, I'll try it. Let me, let me press autofocus. See if it'll autofocus on Vega. Vega is actually a pretty big, bright star. Well, I think it did it. All right, now we're going to go to a the North American Nebula here, which is NGC 7000. Press confirm. Looks okay. Now, right now you really don't see it in the field of view because it's pretty dim i'd have to do a 10 second shot on it right now that's like a i don't know what the exposure is like not even one second so let's come over here to telephoto and see how it's on one second so what we're going to do is change it to 10 seconds i have been doing 10 seconds 10 second shots so we're going to continue with that Gain, I was doing gain at 100. And the IR pass. And then we come back to feature. And 
we come up to more and I'm going to keep it in fits. Binning is still uh, two by two. And let's change it to like 100 shots. Let's start off with 100 shots. I might do more. Press confirm. And we're going to come back here to, yep, everything's still the same. So we're going to press go. And we see right at the top up there, it says exposure 10 seconds. That's exactly what I want. It says gain 100 and a total of 100 images. I notice where it says stacked. There we go. Now it's, and I'm gonna get rid of this other way. And I can see the faint outline of it in here. So it's gonna get better throughout the night, the, the stacking. The more images it stacks, the better it gets. But I can see the outline in them exactly where I was the other night when I was doing this as well. Okay, folks, I thought I'd just share you with my screen. Uh, once again, it's, stacked 67 exposures now and you can see how much more well defined the nebula actually is you can actually see it's starting to pop in and, and it does resemble north america somewhat okay just thought i'd share that with you okay folks well that's all i have for you thanks for watching and we'll see you next time